Thank you very much, Peter. It's a great pleasure to be here uh, supporting the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, which we regard as one of our very important partners in this great national enterprise uh, of defence and defence industry. I'd also like to recognise the Secretary of my department, Greg Moriarty, who's just flown in from the United States. And I texted him and told him to go home and go to bed, but he's defied me, which is not the first time for a Secretary for Defence to defy the Minister. <laughs> Uh, and Ray Griggs, the VCDF, welcome to Ray Griggs as well, and to High Commissioners and Ambassadors and members of the defence industry. ASPE's commitment to the providing independent expert advice to the government has been long-standing and it's very welcome. It's contributed to effective strategic policy decisions, especially about defence and defence industry. ASPE's advice is well respected as much as it's generous. And I'm pleased to say ASPE doesn't project fear or favour when it comes to giving advice and nor should it. Uh, I for one welcome and value genuine input. Today I launched the first ever Defence Industrial Capability Plan, one of the core strategic pillars underpinning the Turnbull government's historic $200 billion investment in defence capability over the next 10 years. This investment is by far the largest and most comprehensive strengthening our defence capability in our peacetime history. A $200 billion in commitment is by any standards ambitious. Governments on both sides have announced many policies and initiatives over time and supporting Australian defence industry. But the unmet challenge until now has been to unite these initiatives in a single detailed policy framework that reaches across the breadth of planning and decision making through to implementation. The Turnbull government is delivering such a coherent and cohesive policy bank. Our goal is clear. We seek to achieve by 2028 a matured, innovative Australian defence industry with greatly enhanced levels of competitiveness in the international marketplace. We talk about a decade, but we're really looking way beyond that point. We're looking for an Australian defence industrial base that will stand us in good stead through to the end of the century and beyond. What we want is a sovereign defence industrial industry with the capability, readiness and resilience to help match Australia's defence needs to the greatest extent possible within our own borders. Australia must have an innovative domestic defence industry that can provide the best capabilities possible for our Australian defence force. It's in our national interests, it's directly in the interests of our nation's security. And for the Turnbull government and many others, it has an additional dimension. Defence industry must also contribute mightily to the Australian economy. We want it to enhance the prosperity of thousands of Australian families through industrial opportunities and jobs. So today with this Defence Industrial Capability Plan, we're taking a steady, deliberate and detailed step towards the twin objectives of national and economic security. We're putting forward a blueprint, one that creates maximum capability alignment between defence needs and defence industry. Since the Defence White Paper was released in early 2016, the Turnbull government has been busy. We've committed to an unprecedented renewal of our naval fleet, 12 future submarines, nine anti-submarine warfare future frigates, three air warfare destroyers and 12 offshore patrol vessels. Our $90 billion naval shipbuilding plan will see them all built here in Australia by Australians. We've established the Naval Shipbuilding College to increase the workforce and skills needed to deliver this ambitious plan. We've decided on the builder, Ryan Mattel, for of our future combat reconnaissance vehicles. We've reached a landmark $1 billion of contracts for the Joint Strike Fighter. And I've just returned from the United States where I was pushing for more work for Australian companies on this vital platform. Underpinning those capability decisions and achievements has been a strong and comprehensive policy framework. We've had the Defence White Paper, the Integrated Investment Program, the Defence Industry Policy Statement and the Defence Export Strategy, not to mention our $90 billion naval shipbuilding plan. The Coalition is getting on with the job. So I hasten to add that we are moving fast to implement a vast enterprise of associated activity that is already starting to pay off. When we launched the Defence Export Strategy in, in January, Australia's very first such strategy, I said it was about job creation, that it was about giving Australian defence companies the support they needed to grow, invest, 
and contribute to defence capability. It was a plan designed to assist Australian industry become more internationally competitive and more innovative. Today's release of the Defence Industrial Capability Plan takes that further. First and foremost, it restates the government's policy of maximising the involvement of competitive Australian companies in the acquisition, operation and sustainment of defence capability. The plan has a key message for industry, that we expect all companies, including primes, that want to work with defence, to consider how they currently or might best fit into the big picture. Because we want industry to structure and invest to maximise their involvement, the plan strengthens the definition of Australian defence industry. Put simply, we are redefining the phrase Australian defence industry. Having just an Australian business number is not enough if you're planning to be part of this. Being a serious contributor in Australian defence industry means having Australian-based industrial capability. It means company and board presence, infrastructure and a skills base that can compete, that can complete value-added work here in Australia employing Australian workers. It's an important shift and signals to industry that establishing a shop front and getting an ABN is no longer enough. Plenty in this room know that I give tremendous support to Australia's defence industry, but I also demand a lot from them, so this will come as no surprise. The plan goes further. The plan lays out a range of opportunities of our defence industry, particularly our small to medium enterprises, over the next decade. It reaches across each of the integrated investment program capability streams that together call upon the $200 billion investment in defence capability over that period. The plan details the range of existing and new defence industry and innovation programs that combined form a system for Australia to build its industrial capability. Because it brings all the elements of the undertaking together in a single package, it's overarching. It's a fantastic summary for industry of the direction we're heading in and what opportunities are available. As a nation, as an industry, it's incumbent upon all of us to capture all the opportunities and bring them to reality as we intensify the throughput of projects and programs in the Integrated Investment Program. The government is pulling its weight. We have the much needed comprehensive policy bank in place and we have appropriated unprecedented funding. We're achieving record levels of government decisions on our major capital equipment investment. In the last financial year, the Turnbull government approved 74 capability-related proposals. As at March this year, we're already on 90 decisions. Unlike our predecessors, we're reducing delays and in fact are bringing forward decisions ahead of schedule. This pattern from the Turnbull government will continue throughout 2018 and coming years. The government will release Australian industrial strategies for each of the six integrated investment program capability streams from mid-2019. This timing is necessary in order to ensure the analysis that underpins these industrial strategies is robust and that there has been sufficient time for consultation. The strategies will take into account the government's major capability decisions over 2018, the initial implementation of the sovereign industrial capability priorities and the defence industry initiatives addressed in today's defence industrial capability plan. Today's plan uh, introduces an initial list of sovereign industrial capability priorities. There are some industrial capabilities that we must have access to or control over here in Australia. Sovereign industrial capability secures the Australian Defence Force's ability to achieve its operational mission today and well into the future. The term sovereignty means different things to different people, but in the national defence context, it's the ability to independently employ defence capability or force when and where required. To produce a desired military effect with or without notice, with or without our allies. That said, our defence sovereignty is enabled by industrial capability sourced both within Australia and overseas. Thus, we will continue to leverage the United States and the international market for many major platforms and systems in order to deliver the best capability to our war fighters. The government is fully committed to Australian participation to the highest extent possible. But the nature of global supply chains today 
means no country can be fully self-sufficient in its defence or its defence industry. Even if Australia wanted to substantially grow the scale of industrial capability manufactured in Australia, it would not be cost effective to do so in all areas. So in approaching the consideration of sovereign industrial capability priorities, we focused on a definition that covers access to or control over the essential skills, technology, intellectual property, financial resources and infrastructure within our defence industrial base. The initial sovereign industrial capability priorities are the product of a rigorous assessment framework. It took in the strategic capability and resource dimensions of industrial sovereignty and it made judgments based on defence needs. In this context, the initial sovereign industrial capability priorities identified in this plan are focused on areas that are operationally critical to the defence mission. Priorities within the integrated investment program over the next three to five years, or that need more dedicated monitoring, management and support due to their industrial complexity, government priority or requirements across multiple capability programs. The priorities are described at a capability level rather than a company or technology level. This approach will encourage innovation in existing technologies and provide flexibility in supporting new developments across the integrated investment program, capability streams and within individual projects. The 10 initial sovereign industrial capability priorities are the Collins class submarine maintenance and technology upgrade, continuous shipbuilding program including the rolling submarine acquisition, land combat vehicle and technology upgrade, enhanced active and passive phased array radar capability, combat clothing survivability and signature reduction technologies, advanced signal processing capability in electronic warfare, cyber and information security and signature management technologies and operations, surveillance and intelligence data collection, analysis and dissemination and complex systems integration, test evaluation, certification and systems assurance, munitions and small arms research, design, development and manufacture and the aerospace platform deep maintenance. These sovereign industrial capabilities priorities take the place of the previous priority industry capabilities. There will be similarities between those, between the priority industry capabilities and the sovereign industrial capability priorities. This is natural given the nature of our defence industrial base and its strengths and state of development. However, there is a substantial change to how these priorities are to be managed and supported compared to the previous approach, where priority industry capabilities were managed in isolation. The sovereign industrial capability priorities will be developed, managed and supported right across our defence planning spectrum. This will run from early in the defence capability planning process, including in strategic policy and force design cycles. The priorities will be considered as part of the integrated investment program planning to determine whether defence needs to prioritise, allocate funding to or mandate these capability priorities across the life cycle. Where relevant, the sovereign industrial capability priorities will be incorporated into the Australian industry capability plans that accompany major capital equipment projects of $20 million and above. The priorities will also be considered in the targeting of defence industry and innovation funding. I'm also pleased to announce today that a new dedicated grant program valued at up to $17 million a year will provide direct support to Australian small to medium enterprises that contribute to the sovereign industrial capability priorities. This competitive grant process, which will be delivered by the Centre for Defence Industry Capability, which I notice Andrew is here, the head of the CDIC, will commence in mid-2018. It will help small to medium enterprises meet a portion of the costs for capital equipment purchases and non-recurring engineering costs. In announcing these initial priorities, it's important to reinforce that this is not about picking winners or seeking to focus our defence industry into selected areas. The broad-based opportunities for Australian industry will continue across the whole integrated investment program. We need Australian industry to be active across the entire program. The priorities ensure that our defence industry is robust and resilient in areas critical to our defence. 
for mid-2019, the government will release implementation plans for the 10 priorities. They'll provide greater detail on the level of defence demand for each priority, the strengths, risks and opportunities facing the sector, and how defence will ensure the industrial capability is developed and supported to ensure they remain resilient. This further work will provide an opportunity to undertake deep analysis of the industrial base that supports each priority. In turn, it will look at the best balance of mechanisms to support them, acknowledging they individually differ and will require differing approaches. As I said, these are the initial priorities. The sovereign industrial capability priorities will be reviewed periodically to assess whether further focus on the delivery of these capabilities is required. A roadshow of briefings will follow to make sure industry across the country is well positioned to take advantage of the opportunities included in the plan. Today in launching the Australian Government's first ever Defence Industrial Capability Plan, we're setting out the vision and objectives for our whole defence industry over the next decade. We're detailing how we'll work together with our partners to achieve success. Our vision for our defence industry a decade from now in 2028 has five objectives. One is for a broader and deeper defence industrial base, where agile small to medium enterprises are better placed to interact with defence and global defence companies and are not solely reliant on the Australian Defence Force for their success. Two is for a strategic approach to defence industry investment to ensure Australian government investment in critical defence capabilities is prioritised and that Australian businesses are provided the maximum opportunity to be involved. Three, for an innovative and competitive defence industry boasting world-leading defence capabilities developed through increased collaboration between defence, business, universities and the research sector. Four, for a robust defence industry export capability, where Australia's defence industry is a key player in international defence capabilities, providing greater stability for businesses across peaks and troughs in domestic demand and increasing their capability to support defence. And five, for a defence and industry partnership that enables Australia to position for the future by ensuring we have the right people with the right skills in the right place at the right time to respond to changing environments, to seize opportunities and to manage increasing strategic and techno technological complexity. We are at a very important moment in time for Australia's defence industry. It's a true watershed moment for our whole nation. We can achieve these goals if we have the right people with the right skills, can respond to a change in the strategic environment and can seize all available opportunities and if we manage increasing strategic and technological complexity. We have the policy structure for it. We have a mass massive fiscal commitment from the Turnbull government and from its record of action. Since the Defence White Paper was released just over two years ago, we've made great and real progress. We've seen the benefits of having strengthened the Australian Industry Capability Program requirements to build sovereign indu Australian industry capability. It shows in our offshore patrol vessel and our land 400 combat reconnaissance capability investments. It's estimated the OPV project will create about 1,000 jobs 400 directly and 600 in the supply chain. The Australian industry content for the project is estimated at 60 per cent. It will also help preserve and enhance shipbuilding skills required for the future frigates. The first two OPVs will be built at the Osborne Naval Shipyard in South Australia starting this year, before 10 will be constructed at the Henderson Maritime Precinct in Western Australia from 2020. Over the 30-year life of the combat reconnaissance vehicles, Australian industry will secure two-thirds or $10.2 billion of the total investment in acquiring and maintaining the fleet. It's estimated that up to 1,450 jobs will be created right across Australia. Ryan Mattal is working with more than 40 companies around the country, ensuring the delivery of these vehicles will be a national enterprise. This is what we want and this is where we're going. We recognise industry as a fundamental input to capability, ensuring industry is considered across our defence capability planning. We've moved towards a more sustainable and resilient defence industry that's more export oriented and internationally competitive 
with our defence export strategy. We've initiated the first defence industry information campaign, the workforce behind the defence force, so Australians of all ages and businesses are alert to the opportunities available. We've established enablers of industry and innovation through the Centre for Defence Industry Capability, the Defence Innovation Hub and the Next Generation Technologies Fund. And our work goes on. We're transforming the way we acquire military capability and defence companies from around the world have responded. These companies no longer just outline the strengths of their vehicle or their ship or their widget. They also show us how many Australians will be employed making that platform, how many Australian companies will be in the supply chain, what percentage of Australian product will be used and how Australian industry will be further developed to stand on its own. For example, with the recent announcement of the decision to build 211 Ryan Mattel Boxer armoured fighting vehicles, it was shown that Australian industry content for the acquisition and sustainment of the vehicles could be around 70%, and as I said, more than 40 local suppliers would be used from all over the country, and that Rheinmetall would establish a military vehicle centre of excellence. We're seeing the same sorts of commitments from the three companies who submitted tenders to build our future frigates. This industrial capability plan is to give these companies more direction and guidance on how to achieve the defence industry our nation needs. Until now, Australia has never had a long-term plan for what we want our defence industry to be, nor do we have a blueprint to guide the development of that industry. We created that vision for our naval shipbuilding industry with the Naval Shipbuilding Plan in May last year. Now in releasing this first ever defence industrial capability plan today, the government is putting forward its vision, its direction and plan for a defence industry that is positioned to meet Australia's strategic and capability goals. There's much to be proud of regarding our defence industry today and how in particular it's responded to the opportunities and the policy directions that the government's laid out. But we're still at the beginning, or perhaps we are at the end of the beginning, but we are certainly together getting ahead. Now in order to realise the objectives of this plan, defence industry must set step up and deliver with even greater commitment. Industry must invest in the technology, the skills and people required to reform and increase its competitiveness. The government sees a very bright future for defence industry if it takes advantage of the available opportunities. In 2028, Australia's defence industry will be larger, more capable and more internationally competitive than it is now. There'll be more medium-sized Australian defence businesses pulling through small to medium enterprise enabled supply chains across a geographically dispersed national industrial base. Our defence industry will offer well-paid, long-term career paths. It'll be investing heavily in science, technology, engineering and mathematics to support the needs of a more complex Australian defence force. It'll be looking to build greater capacity and capability in areas requiring greater sovereignty. The technology cycle will move very fast in many areas of the sector, requiring high degrees of innovation at a relentless pace. An export-oriented defence industry will be more internationally competitive and resilient, offering cost-effective solutions to meet defence's need. It's not for the faint-hearted. I encourage companies across Australia to read our plan, note the potential opportunities and to take advantage of the support that we're offering. This government is clearly serious about enhancing the partnership between defence and defence industry because we are committed to the defence industry. That means doing the right thing by Australia in terms of long-term defence, national security and economic security. Succeeding in this national enterprise will require a national approach. It's one that can't be achieved by government alone. Detailed plans such as this give industry the best help government can deliver. To further paraphrase, paraphrase Winston Churchill, as I did a minute ago, we aim to give industry the policy tools. Now it's for industry to finish the job. Industry will always have the coalition government's backing. We'll be there every step of the way because we are deeply committed to our national security as our record shows, and we're deeply committed to prosperity for every Australian as our record also shows. 
Thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you and to launch the Defence Industrial Capability Plan here today. And I wish you all a very bright and very capable 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you.